Inshallah those whom watching online, those whom watching at home, watching wherever, make uh, comments please on the videos and put some uh, comments in there that you understood what's been talked about, brief summary of what you understood from the talks is uh, alhamdulillah it's great for the algorithm and that we go back and read. We read and then get a, a nice understanding of, of people's uh, comprehensions and people's comments and it helps a lot of other people who are watching that they go back and they're reading the comments that they didn't understand something that somebody else put in a bullet point. So alhamdulillah it's like a class and it's a very interactive class and it leads new people whom are searching to come this direction because they have access to a shaykh, they have access to, to learning, they have access to the questions. So it's, it's, it's an overall very beautific expression of support. So please continue to, to make the comments, share the feeds, share the videos, translate them in your language inshaAllah and to live a life of service. Go to the website, click on one of the, the charity things, the link and then share. Share that to social media, to Facebook, to Instagram, wherever you and whatever you're using, thank you, to share it and live a life of service. Alhamdulillah if they tried to take one thing down, if we multiplied ourselves a thousand times then imagine how powerful that is. And in these algorithms when you make a, a social media account and you make an account for the first time and send it out, the first one they give you a big boost because they want everyone to see your first load. But when we send and after a period of time they begin to shadow ban us, they don't like the content and they begin to slow it down. But if a thousand people take a video and make a new account then you've crashed their algorithm. You know that people can talk of every disgusting topic and they push it because it's a system in which to contaminate and sicken people. But when our talk is against cigarettes and smoking they said this is, a, this is un unwanted content. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs. Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Content, <laughs> they flag the talk as unwanted content, is how Hezbo Shaitan is, is so sort of belligerent now and open to what they believe. So. Our goal is that you know 300, 400, 500 people listening by the time we end this broadcast it's up to three, four thousand views. Well make a social media account, take our short video and load it new. And then in a couple weeks make another account and load it new. And that way we can keep coming against their algorithm trying to slow us down, inshaAllah. Allah reward those whom willing to fight with their finger. Yeah, instead of all the other things you could be doing that are unnecessary, make an account and send out these videos and live a life of service. Take this and send it, take this and send it. And Allah give, give us a, a reward for propagating this ishq and this love inshaAllah. What do we got for tonight? As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi, while reciting each month's veil recitation, what should be our focus? The same focus that everything you're doing is make your muraqabah, make your connection and asking that Allah address you from these tajallis. So you can recite a little bit at the beginning of the month or at every zikr or at every prayer 
make a little bit of the tasbih, Subhana man huwa khaliqa nur Ya Rabbi, alhamdulillah. It's the understanding that's important. So the one whom creating light at the end of each salah, ten times, hundred times, whatever you like. And then meditating and every time you're meditating add some of these zikrs and, and meditate on them, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can a jinn pose as an angel, pretend to be? Yeah everything of course they pose as everything. That's why they're fooling people. These people who have uh, seances and, and uh, garbage practices, they sit and they say, oh a spirit came, such a beatific angel. You're not capable of seeing angels and angels don't reveal themselves without a high level of, of purity. So these are the demons and jinn and not the good ones because a good one is never allowed to imitate and lie. So any, anyone lying is, is not of good nature, so just like humans. So we said that before, so the, the thought of angelic energy is ridiculous. It's not a spectrum that's seen, the orbs and the dots that people see is a jinn nation. The angelic frequency is not, is not something capable for human beings nor is their sound something capable. Prophet asked and every time that Prophet was see Sayyidina Jibra'il as salam he came as a very beatific handsome man like the beauty of Sayyidina Yusuf and he would converse with him. And Prophet asked, Ya Sayyidi, Ya Sayyidina Jibra'il let me to see you in your angelic form and being the master of creation. He said, I'm, I'm not comfortable revealing myself as an angelic form. And after continuously asking, no I want to see you in your angelic form, Prophet related that when Sayyidina Jibra'il appeared on the entire horizon that was such a majestic sight that the entire horizon was the reality of Sayyidina Jibra'il with all his wings and Prophet fainted. And Sayyidina Jibra'il came and back to physical form and came and grabbed Prophet and apologized for the energy and the haybah of that presence and that was a teaching for us that the angelic realm is not so easy that people throw out these words and, and think that they, they converse with angels, it's just rubbish stuff. They usually come from New Age people thinking that it was so easy to converse with you know these very purified lights with you being unpurified. So it's, it's not even in an energy understanding that when you're of a lower spectrum frequency how is it that you think you can operate at these immensely high frequencies? By virtue of the understanding of energy if a lower frequency approaches these high energies, those high energies will destroy the lower frequency, right? So if you're vibrating and then their vibration is much stronger, what happens when you go into their vibration? They shatter everything, so it means that if people move into their frequency they will shatter them because of the vibration and the level at which they vibrate and the hamd and the power in which they're emanating. So that's not, that's not uh, an understanding. Now if they want to reveal themselves by bringing their frequencies down, bringing their, their images down that's something very rare. So this understanding of the jinn then impersonating them, showing beatific lights and saying, I'm a spirit, I'm your spirit guide, I'm here to guide you, no. That, that, that's going to be also of a nefarious nature because the good never imitate and never lie about being good. The good ones they 
stay their distance and they're not to interfere with humanity. They work and operate with awliya and they facilitate what awliya are in need of. So under that work is something different but to interfere with humanity is not for them. So then they would never pose as being an angel and lying about their state and their reality. So no, lots of misconceptions because of all this new ages and, and all these different philosophies that people are putting out and most of it by people whom are blind and don't see. And those whom think they do see, they don't see that frequency. So they see a frequency of jinn and see colors that the jinn are emanating. So when you go places they say, oh we see all your colors, I see the spectrums and colors of your aura. So know that a jinn is playing with you. You don't think a jinn can show like yellow light around you? Well he, he can do many amazing things and many tricks. Showing a yellow light around you is not a big one. They have much bigger tricks in their sleeves. So this is ridiculous to think that oh, the see the aura, you didn't purify your heart, you didn't reach any of these haqqaiqs. Means that this a jinn comes around these people and begins to show them and they think, oh I can see the auras of people. No, it's just the jinn is allowing and playing sort of delusional tricks on your eyes. So that's why the, the way of reality is madad. Connect yourself, be nothing, connect yourself to the shaykhs, to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and with that connection they don't even allow that discussion. Let me say this, let me do this, let me talk to this jinn, they don't even allow it with that connection. That's the safeguard that when you're connecting with the shaykhs they don't allow those types of things. They don't enter into that type of discussion. That's what we clarified also those whom are trying to make connections. Don't use it for worldly needs. That I'm making a connection now, I want this person, I'm making a connection, I want to buy this thing. That connection is only for your ibadah and for your akhirah. <coughs> that please grant this du'a, please inspire me on this du'a, please inspire me in my namaz and my, my uh, ibadah and then they inspire you, pray now 20 more rakahs. Anything that are difficult against the nafs. That's when the, the meditation and tafakkur is used, not for the conveyance of dunya issues and expressions of dunya matters inshaAllah. And the ones whom engage and use that for dunya now it becomes hallucinations because it's not anymore the shaykhs and it's just the nafs and maybe a shaitan enters into that and begins to play with the person. So imagine a realm in which you can't see and is very present in every, every aspect of life and that how dangerous that is. That's why the, the single most important is the madat, the one whom understands to make a connection, call upon the shaykh, call upon the, the madat of the shaykhs and asking for the light of Prophet and nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad then that becomes like a safety for what they're doing and what they're about to enter into, into the oceans of light and, and power inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is this the same when people say that this saint and that saint is with me since I was a child? No. That's something different because that, that is a given personality, right? Versus like saying, a spirit is with me, guiding me. If they saw a shaykh, they know the shaykh, the shaykh is from the family, then that's the madat that's being taught. But if they say that it's just a spirit, I don't even know who it is, but it's a spirit been guiding me, then because it's questionable, you don't enter into it. But as soon as you become old enough then you learn how to make the madad, keep the wudu, make your salat, then make your connection to the shaykh and then ask from the shaykh the connection. Then you're now in a safe way of uh, connecting with energy. When you don't and you don't know who's speaking to you, the spirit is coming to me and the spirit looks like this and he can be appealing because the jinn also can imitate anything. 
They come and they imitate what they want and they think, oh it's a, it's a, it looked like a bearded person but I don't know who it is. Then again, you know, you turn to what you've been trained, you make your madad, go for the connection of the shaykhs you know and the way that you've been taught and that's the whole safeguard. So people whom have had those experiences in life then Allah guides them to hidayat and guidance and that's why is that go now make sure that your connection is correct, your practices are correct and the, the way that you're connecting is correct and that becomes a safeguard. So we've had people, we've given this expression before, people come and all of a sudden in the middle of training and it's going and going and all of a sudden they came and started sitting with me and saying, you know I, I have a strong connection with Imam Ali so I have to leave. And I said, you're lying because you don't have a strong connection, not in my presence you don't have a strong connection with Imam Ali, you have a jinn inside you wanting you to leave because Imam Ali wouldn't tell you to leave me because I know my relationship with Imam Ali so you're lying. There's a being inside you that playing with you because you can't see these personalities and that eventually or inevitably was correct and there was a very bad being that harmed that individual. But that's the, the role that the shaitans play is to make somebody think they're somebody. The most faked one is Sayyidina Isa salam, right? When we call the dajjal and the minor dajjal is that every cultish figure has come out imitating Jesus. And, and many, many, many of these organizations, these cultish people and, and, and sort of possessed people, they actually go through faith saying that they are Jesus. So most impersonated because most misunderstood reality of a Prophet because they propagated incorrect information of who Sayyidina Isa is. He's is not that one on the cross and not in diapers. His power and eminence is something very fearful. If they look at him they'll tremble. He didn't come with that softness. Prophet came with softness, shaitan flipped it. Sayyidina Isa came very tough that you tremble if you see he's sweating big thick black beard, big thick hair and a very majestic face that is, is not playing soft with anyone. He was intolerant and didn't tolerate even utter for his, his, his deputies and had 12. So it's completely different. So of course if you propagate the incorrect information of Sayyidina Isa salam, what happens? Then everyone thinks that that figure is Sayyidina Isa which is shaitan and as a result they connect them and say, oh I'm, I'm, I'm that guy over there and, and, and before you know it they all came out and said that they're Jesus. But Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam salam, no way. Remember the organizations we knew that their people would pretend that they're Jesus and yeah. So that, that become very dangerous. That's why the incorrect information and, and people whom can't connect their heart and don't know then that those are the dangerous places to go. While as a wants guidance for them is, is then accompany living guides and train with the living guide keep the hand on that living guide and every difficulty you're going to go through don't take your hand off of it and don't think your command is higher. I, I'm now talking to this one, I don't need it anymore, thank you. No, there's something in you that's wrong. So those shaykhs, those prophets would not tell you to disconnect with a, a living guide like that. That's just a shaitan coming to somebody to get them away from the shaykh. So that, that's something that has to be very careful and understood inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa <clears throat> During sleep paralysis what could be the intention of jinn doing this to humans? What is the purpose of them trying to overpower us with their energy? to paralyze people, that's called possession. They want to take over people. 
So that's the, the state of this world now is the people to become overtaken. But what they eat will weaken their system, what they drink will weaken their system, medications given to them will weaken their system. So we said that before even if somebody just studies parasites and understands the, the, the logic of parasites then you'd be astonished. Now a little microbe or, or little tiny creature that comes into your nervous system can overtake all your bodily functions. So these systems that are coming and the difficulty that faces insan are from parasites, right? So the jinn know that, they know that if they release these ti tiny microbes that are just parasites from what they've created. If they enter into the human system it's like a hacker, same how computers on, on programmers understood that they send a virus into somebody's computer through a code. It's called mal code or malware, a malicious code when it comes through an email, through something you clicked, what happens? Because the computer is a symbol of ourselves. So you just Google, what is malware and, and viruses on computers, you'll understand yourself. So somebody nefarious sends an email with a corrupt code, you open it, they gained access to your computer. Now inside your computer they say, oh, where are his passwords? They get the passwords. Where is this banking? You get the banking. Where is this? Where is that? And they begin to operate your computer as if it was you. Right? Well, the, this is the jinn world. Now you're the computer and they say, well we want this guy, okay we'll send our microbes in. And the microbe goes in, attaches itself to the central nervous system of the person and immediately the functionality of that human has been overtaken and more and more complicated and more and more can enter into the body where they can actually take over the functioning of the brain until the person is hallucinating and seeing what that parasite is putting into them. So medicine knows that. So all of these types of difficulty come to this earth. That's why again then the internal power is more powerful than external power. Right? So spending your days in the gym all day long, making yourself physically like you're… that's not where the battle is, the battle is coming inside. So that when you have an internal energy and you have internal practices, the energy that Allah sends within you can electrify these parasites, right? So that was like the matrix, they would have a a pulse of energy that would shatter all the creatures inside when they broke the matrix. There were still creatures coming after them and it required electromagnetic pulse that would shatter their technologies. But put this on a micro understanding of, uh, of viruses and, and uh, enigmas coming into the body that the internal energy when it's built, if Allah won't with their zikr there's certain zikrs when Allah gives a permission immediately their body will feel. Every zikr they do will be like explosive energies within their being. Those are enough to shatter everything within the blood system, within the body system of lights that sort of make everything to malfunction. Anything of a hostile nature entering into insan. Allah that when Allah gives the sincerity of the heart of the servant there are so many tools that Allah can open for that servant in which their zikr has an immense power on their energy and that their zikr will cleanse their heart, cleanse their body and destroy all the inner enemy. 
And that's why the du'as of Grand Shaykh is, Ya Rabbi that destroys my inner enemy and my inner badness. For if those are destroyed the outer one's easy to come after, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah What can we do if our feet spark with fire but it never really overtakes or comes any higher or only some unstable combustion? Thank you and forgive me. Try not to, to walk around <laughs> any hay and, and any flammable <laughs> objects. <laughs> That ground your energy, meditate on grounding your energy, keep your wudu, keep the khuf that uh, for the people whom, who want to ground their feet. Sometimes also the leather hoofs provide a, a, a protective layer from the feet and, and different energies that are coming. So there's all sorts of different practices that you have to do to ground your energy. And then pay attention to what creates more and more energy upon the feet and at times uh, malls and busy locations and be very careful that not to, to make your, your body to be too heated. Literally your feet can get very hot or cold, extremely cold or extremely hot or both, one hot one cold because again these are the energy currents that are moving within the body. But again everything is based on madad. That if you've mastered the madad, the madad and the shaykhs are the regulators. The one whom makes the connection and brings the energies of the shaykhs within their being, it's a regulator for them. Because that which we don't know, well, the purpose of the madad is get out of the way, let the shaykhs reality come. They know how to regulate the system and how to fix it. And anything that is of a nefarious nature, inappropriate or not good nature, the madad comes to fix that inshaAllah. Versus somebody trying to be trained on each aspect for themselves. There's not enough time, there's not enough permissions for seclusions and, and all of these practices. This is the month of seclusions. So this is a month in which to meditate and contemplate and to do your spiritual practices and, and different acts of uh, charity and good deeds and goodness so that Allah open for us from His bounty. And anyone can come after asr from work and spend a little bit of time in their meditation and seclude themselves for meditation and contemplation. They can eat their lentils as a, as a fight against themselves. It's not supposed to be a, a delicious meal. So then you don't have to have 500 questions on, can I add this, can I add that, can I get this, can I have half this, can I have a kebab three days after, can I have a, this? It's supposed to be a fight. You're fighting yourself with food so that you understand a, a, a particular food becomes boring. And the body just loses interest. So then you don't have to keep asking, can I do this, can I do that? You're trying to get an exception from us then don't do it at all. But if you want to do it then do it right and use the food as a fight and you fight to get to know your belly and you'll know that this is the source of all sickness. So this is a rahmah in the month of Rajab. It goes 40 days, 30 days Rajab, 10 days into Shaban. So the lentil diet and the seclusion and to asr time go in and, and begin to meditate and contemplate and no phone, no nothing, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, we are doing the practices but we're always having lots of leg pain and is this connected to spirituality or energy in some way? Anything, any type of pain. If you're sitting in a position and your energy flow is not cor correct or you may be having cramps, uh, energy flowing on the legs and back. So we have that in the meditation book and we have that in the angelic, the angelic healing, power of angelic healing in our energy book. So of course everything is energy, means the floor has energy, the ground, the dunya and what's keeping your two feet upright 
on a vertical horizon is all energy. Means Allah's providing an energy in your spine that gives you two feet the ability to move where you should have been on four because nothing with two moves on the earth. So how, how are you keeping a balance like a gyro, inner gyro that Allah spins that keeps you balanced? So means there's an energy on your vertebrae, on your spine and that energy is holding you on a horizontal plane of the earth. So then there's going to be an immense clash on your feet and in your legs and trying to move up your spine. And the energy that you're bringing from the heavens upon the heart and upon the soul and that's where they're clashing. So based on your wudu and energy practices, the meditations, the breathing, all of these types of practices is going to then make the energy flow, push out the negative and bring in the positive. InshaAllah. We'll get the energy book, get the meditation book that goes over these subjects, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam, inshaAllah. What is the difference between a negative self image and admitting you're nothing? Big difference. Admitting your nothingness is a control against arrogance. Negative self-image is keep looking at yourself, I'm ugly, I'm not, I'm, I'm not intelligent, I'm, that, that's just being negative and your power of manifestation will actually make that to be negative. So the positive thought is Allah loves His creation, created you loving, beautiful, the way exactly Allah wants you. So you have to love what Allah created. But to come against yourself is a form of humility that as soon as you begin to practice this is not about dunya and my image. So my image is to be nothing, I'm nothing. So I spiritually practice as if my Lord whatever you give to me I'm nothing. Whatever I think I know I'm nothing, this is humility. And then all of a sudden if Allah begins to open energies for you. You said, I'm nothing, so don't worry about it. Otherwise, if we don't tell you that, you'll meditate and say, Shaykh, I'm like, uh, I can see this, uh, I can feel this. And before you know it, your nafs came and grabbed those experiences and now destroyed them because he put himself into the experience. But to, to have an image of oneself, oh, I'm, I'm this uh, physically not this attractive, I'm like this, I'm not mentally that. Uh, smart, that, that has nothing to do with being humble. So you always have to think the best that Allah has you to be perfectly smart. You understand everything Allah needs you to understand. You are in the image that Allah created you and that's beatific, exactly the way Allah wants you to be. Once you understood that and to be thankful and to have shukr, otherwise you're unthankful for what Allah has given. And that can then make the person to be depressed because they're pushing away from what Allah has given and Allah's blessings. So one is to be thankful and to say, Alhamdulillah wa shukranillah that Ya Rabbi for everything you've given to me. Even you think it's not enough, it is great. So once you're thankful Allah can always give more. But if you're not thankful now, you'll never be thankful. So Allah will open the door and then the servant just goes downward until there's going to be a humbling act. So thankfulness and shukr and, uh, and praising the Divine then you reach an even keel. But now in meditation you have to remind yourself in the spiritual world and your spiritual understanding you can think you're not attractive but you read a book and you may understand a lot. So the two are completely different subjects. You may understand things but if you don't train yourself that I'm nothing, you become arrogant and prideful of what you think you know or how good you pray and all your ibadah and worshipness becomes built on the foundation of pride. So pride and self-worth are something completely different. Western philosophy, Western teaching is completely corrupt. So throw the Western teaching out and bring in Islamic teaching. And Sufism is the, is the pinnacle of all of these teachings. 
all of its medicines, all of its uh, psychology, everything. Because these are two completely different oceans. Pridefulness and boastfulness, it comes against the Divine. Gratefulness is mandatory by Allah So the person who is not grateful for their appearance, Allah can make it a lot worse. The one who's not grateful for the acumen or the ability they have, Allah can make it great, much worse. So gratefulness is a part of faith that I have to be grateful for whatever condition, it could always go south. And then when we have gratefulness Allah can always raise a condition. So there have been people who say, oh, I don't know uh, all these things, I, I don't understand this until they reach the subject in which Allah wanted them to know. Because they were forced trying to memorize in school subjects that Allah didn't want them to memorize. Remember their system is not about teaching you, their system is about making you memorize their rubbish. Their history had nothing to do with reality. So many people who, whom are enlightened, Allah doesn't allow them to memorize that. Means they say, oh Shaykh, as much as I try to read I don't get this stuff. Maybe you're not supposed to get it. And then all of a sudden one day they move towards spirituality and they get it like it's coming in like fire to them. So there's a hikmah and there's a wisdom in everything. So that's why gratefulness is, is to always be grateful. Ya Rabbi whatever plan you have for me, great but in this school I don't understand any of these books. Didn't mean I was dumb, just meant that those books meant nothing for me and my destiny. So yeah alhamdulillah be patient, be grateful. Then take the way of humility so that pride and, and arrogance doesn't seep its way into the character inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as uh, This was regarding your talk on addiction the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, SubhanAllah Sayyidi, addiction dropped just by being guided to this channel and watching videos. SubhanAllah, thank you, Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah. Alhamdulillah Allah bless you, dress you and Alhamdulillah so many addictions and so many problems drop when Allah wants them to drop. So the dhikr of Allah alhamdulillah in the immensity of intention and the nazar of awliyaullah to take away these sicknesses. Anyone struggling with smoking, stop it. Stop your smoking, recite 40 Surat al-Fatiha on water, blow upon that water, keep a pitcher of water, recite with intention, Ya Rabbi please stop my smoking and that the shaitan entering within my breath, recite 40 Surat al-Fatiha upon the water and every time the water drops down fill it back up, recite your 40 Surat al-Fatiha, inshaAllah Allah take that smoking from your heart because that, that energy that you're inhaling are shayateen, very nefarious jinn. And they procreate into your lungs and as a result of their seed is what's causing the addiction and the destruction from the lungs. When the lungs are Sidrat al-Muntaha is the, the farthest bound, the, the tree, the Lut tree because the lungs have an immense proximity to the Divine Throne of the heart. So then to purify one's breath is to purify their energy. So alhamdulillah that's very important for spiritual energy and, and spiritual progress inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Someone had a similar question, uh, they were trying to uh, follow these instructions but they were asking are they allowed to wear the patch, the nicotine patch while trying to quit? Yeah I don't think you need it. Because it's that the same carcinogens you're trying to put in to your body. So you know it's like somebody stopping drugs and going for methadone, then you just become addicted to another thing. So you leave one vice for another vice. Try the 40 Surat al-Fatiha, that's why they gave that right now for intention of that person inshaAllah. You recite Surat al-Fatiha 40 times on a pitcher of water. 
As soon as it's dropping down, feel the water back up and again recite Surat Al-Fatiha, inshaAllah that Allah take it, meditate, contemplate that give me a power over these shayateen and their rituals that don't you know cut the, the rituals out. That after they have a coffee they want to sit and have a, a, a tea or have a cigarette, don't. Cut these rituals out, make these du'as and inshaAllah Allah take that away. Because it's an energy within the person, it's not a necessity from the body. It's not that the body is going to be hungry without it, it's just that their, their negative energy is within the person. And inshaAllah the water with the Surat Al-Fatiha is a, all of Qur'an in that Surat Al-Fatiha. And then your training and your madad and making your connection that Allah make and sort of dissipate that negative energy to be burned with the water that you're drinking inshaAllah. <clears throat> uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Do dimensions have a reality in Islam? Are seven heavens a manifestation of seven dimensions? What is a dimension? So the perspective of what you're thinking, how are you trying to ma sort of match it with something? If the dimensions are infinite, why would it be seven? Right? Dimensions are layers. So you think that Allah created anything with a limit? Why? It, it stops. So dimensions can be infinite. So we know that in Adobe and we released those videos, they've been watching these videos. In Adobe and Photoshop graphic artists they work with layers. They draw a rock or a background, then they bring another sheet and they draw the rocks. They bring another sheet and they draw the trees. They bring another sheet they, they draw the humans and the home and they're all just on separate layers. So we understand layering in graphic design. Why we understand that? Well because Allah is giving a hint within these technologies that we're like a adobe. There's many dimensions and there are many creations in these dimensions. And what separates these dimensions you can call them like veils and frequencies. So based on your, your frequency you're able to reside within dimension one. Then there's a creature in dimension two at a different frequency. There's a creature in dimension three at a different frequency. Your ability to move through that dimension is going to be on how high your frequency is, right? Because everything's going to be on Qujjal Haqq. From Qur'an, so when the, these people watch say, where is this in Qur'an? Say, Qujjal haq wa zahaq al batin Say, when the truth comes, say to the truth that falsehood is perishing. So when the truth comes, falsehood is perishing. The truth and haq is the high… is the pursuit of high frequencies, angelic realities and above angelic realities. So the frequency in which you resonate is your power. So the higher you go to the higher frequency, what's the common sense on this? Because the sharia has to be common sense. As you resonate at higher frequencies you have access to all the lower frequencies. You, it's like you own that station, that radio station. But if you're at the lower frequency you have access to nothing. Because you can only stay within your frequency. So what shaitan wants for humans? Play that dirty music, play that hard music, play all these, these, these games, why? So that your frequency goes down to the lowest gate. Well who's there at the lowest gate? Shaitans. Nefarious, very, very evil and nefarious beings because that's where they resonate. <laughs> They're not up with the angels. Right? So they're at the lower gate. They want the humans come down to this gate. 
So when they go down there, what happens to these images now you're seeing with all these people with these markings and colors and gothic looks and everything? Shaitan brought them to the lowest frequency. As a result the Pandora's box opened for them. Every shayateen can enter into them, possess them, torment them until you know rip them to pieces and destroy them. And the torment doesn't end for these people because of the frequency drop. So then our life was to raise the frequency. As soon as they enter into zikr, as soon as they meditate, as soon as they contemplate. Why the meditation? Because they're now asking for the portals. As soon as the shaykhs come and the shaykhs come with all their shaykhs, these are energy portals in which the person enters in a timeless reality. And in, in that timelessness how much Allah address them of energies and vibrations. And if they keep doing, keep doing what Prophet described that one hour of tafakkur, real tafakkur with these people is 70 years of worship. How is that? Well because in one hour of timelessness Prophet is describing you've probably went somewhere and prayed for 70 years in perfection because you entered into a world of light, you don't know what's been done in that world of light. But in the world of light is all ibadah, they don't take you to Hawaii, they take you into ibadah. So in all those oceans of worshipness when you enter into a timeless reality you don't even have to be conscious of it. Some people just fall asleep in their tafakkur. You don't have to, they park the body, they pull the soul. The soul enters into that timeless reality in, in Allah's worshipness at the speed of light in which Prophet is giving to us. It's like 70 years of worship, maybe the servant came back as if he worshipped 70 years, it means it's a lifetime. And then he did it again the next day or in two hours later at the next prayer. And then he did it again and then he did it again. Then you can understand the frequency of these people is something can't be imagined. That they now rise to an angelic frequency in which then their energy can enter all those dimensions. Because this is like Allah gave them a carte blanche, to give them a key that opens every door. But you can't open above you, it's locked. But once you ascend every lower door is open to you. So that's the importance in life is to ascend, make an ascension. And Allah asked in Qur'an, well, have you seen those whom ascended? Means they took to this mountain and went up. So then coming now is the last days, it's understand energy and frequency. Raise your energy, breathing the energy, all your zikr, all of the salawats, all the awrads that have been given to you. Make your salawats, 10,000, 15,000 salawats a day. Why? To raise your frequency. And when Allah wants, because right now there is no permission, the frequency of those servants they're so raised that when Allah opens a permission they merely begin to say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and everything begins to shake because of the immensity of the power in their frequencies. But that's not something you're going to use now and on a bus or in a mall. But the frequency that Allah opened for them for Ahlul Dhikr because their whole being is based on resonance. What kind of powers, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi ali nadeem for one of these servants? What type of power starts to come from them when they're the real servanthoods and real servants of Allah What type of energy Allah will release upon their soul? in every dhikr that they have, in every salawat and durood al-sharif that they make. But now what to do with that? Are you going to go and, and, and to walk in a mall with that dhikr? But you build, you build, you build on a day in which Allah hand a key and say, here you go, inshaAllah. Mm, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. I recall a few years ago um, one of the Naqshbandi shaykhs had mentioned that Imam Mahdi is here and also has a few children. 
Does this mean we are within decades from his Khilafah? You're within minutes, decades. This year everything going to collapse. <clears throat> No decades. <laughs> you have to think that that time is now. Holy Companions, they were so apprehensive that in every bush they looked to see if Dajjal was there because they had faith. And the one whom had mountain of faith, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq that God's eternal peace and blessings be upon his, his noble soul. Is they, they live the life with yaqeen. Why they think that? With the holy companions as fierce warriors is because they saw Dajjal behind every tree. They, these are people whom they would walk and they could see the light of Prophet Sends footprints and they followed based on what they saw. So they could see when he raised them to such a state they could see where Dajjal is walking and where he would enter, where he would move with such a yaqeen. Don't see in the sci-fi movies when somebody can see dimensions? You know only when they walk they can see like burning buildings and you look normal with a physical eye but they see with a spiritual eye that as that building looks normal to you Allah shows them it's all been burned. Because of what's coming upon this earth. What do you think uh, Prophet built of these holy companions in which they could see the movement of where Dajjal is moving? So that's what's important is you have to take yourself to a level of belief where it's now, act as if it's now, prepare your life as if it's now. Otherwise when are you going to be ready for that event? If you live your life as now, Allah opens your eyes to see it as in now. You see, you walk, you see buildings that won't be here and what will be here and what won't be here because your firasal is now beyond the time that we understand. They can look with their eyes and see right now and they can look within their eyes and maybe five years, ten years what that's going to look like because the layers. The dimensions, right? It's just a dimension. This space and time of that center, it's one page, one sheet. What's, what's that center next year? It's just another page there. What's that center next year? It's just another page. But this page shows this image. You move that page. It shows a different image because the scenery changed. You move the layer is another page. It's the same space and same place. It's just time lapse but for Allah there is no time, it's already been written. So Allah allows you then to look at the sheet. You see all the different layers, there's something different in this scenery each time. The dimensions and layers and alhamdulillah. It's all based on the heart. The one whom opens their heart, Allah then says, look, then look again. Then look again until their eyesight comes back to them weakened. Because there's only so much Allah wants to show them that before they, they pass out. InshaAllah. Salaam Sayyidi. Walaykum as salam. Is that the same when the shaykh looks at people? Yes. If it's necessary, because Allah operates with, don't, don't look to the surah, but Allah looks to the heart of the servant. So then in adab that they, they don't want to use the firasan and ask to activate their heart to look at the person, to look at their badness, look at all the layers that exist within them of their actions, their doings. They can stare at a person and see all that they do. But Allah has asked as the adab that I don't look to the surah of My servant but I look to their heart so that not to put them in shame. But there's no doubt that the firasal is the same because ever if it's a building, it's a location 
or it's a person. Every day is a page on your adobe. What you did was a page, yesterday was another page, what you did was another page. You don't think then somebody who just saw the buildings and the street they look at you, you can see all these pages within the person, all the way back to whatever was bad on the page, what type of shaitans were attacking that page or his descendants and all, all of these things. So that's, that's all again the same based on that person who has dimensions. Let's call those layers. So no doubt people walk with every layer that has been drawn upon them, it didn't go anywhere. What you did yesterday didn't go anywhere, it was a page in your kitab. And what you did the day before that was a page in your kitab. But for them your pages are stacked, so when they see you all your pages are there. And if they need to they can start to move through those pages. Only when Allah inspire within their heart from command of Prophet or the shaykhs that look deeper to see where, where there's a problem. At that time they can go deeper into finding where there's a problem, inshaAllah. And what they're supposed to reach and the image of their reality that doesn't look like you. The image of the person's reality is very ancient. The, the image of the person is something completely different, the reality is something completely different, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Haq my Sayyidi, it's proven with 40 Surah Fatiha, I've done it myself, Alhamdulillah it's been one year no smoking. MashaAllah, congratulations Alhamdulillah. Allah's great, Prophet Majestic love and majesty, and alhamdulillah, that Qur'an is power for everything, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum respected Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Can we recite uh, Surah Fatiha 40 times over water for other addictions as well such as internet, phone, etc.? Everything, sure, How, uh, Qur'an is everything. Recite Surah Fatiha on, on the water and for everything. Is that, Ya Rabbi take away this addiction of phone, take away this uh, sickness, take away all, all, all these things that are, are not halal for me and uh, eat good, eat halal, make du'a on everything you eat and drink so that these energies don't come. And then meditate, that as soon as you can meditate listen to salawats, never meditate in silence, you listen to the salawats just a few minutes connecting your heart. InshaAllah Allah make the meditation to be sweeter. If it becomes sweet that is its own addiction, that you, you compensate the sweetness for what Allah has for you versus you know something boring on TV and you do it for just a period of time that led me to be dressed by that light, blessed by that light and alhamdulillah not overwhelming the self and making yourself to be exhausted and tired and making it such a difficult thing to do. Just something that we do and try to connect and make the connection, do the wazifa that we have to do and uh, little by little, little by little inshaAllah until it bears its fruit, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. When one has fallen in a bad state, depression, drug using, etc., what mm. can one do to come back on the path? Get up and take a step. Just make a step that, Ya Rabbi, help me, grant me najat and grant me a salvation and again start the practices right away. Make the connection, do your, your namaz, make your wudu and uh, inshaAllah Allah Zawajal grant you a new day and from that new day a, a new beginning, every day is a new day. So don't give up hope, that's why we said this program uh, in any program you work has one day at a time. Don't think about the future, don't think about all that you lost from the past, it's now your day, your birthday, it's just one day. If you survive that one day, alhamdulillah, why? Because that system teaches you, don't think about the past, it's over. What you could have made, what you could have been, what could have happened, Allah didn't make it that way. 
So the past is gone and why are you contemplating the future? Don't think about it, live in the day. So make tomorrow the best day possible, I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna wash, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna do my meditation, I'm gonna make my connection. At the end of the day, Ya Rabbi alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah that I survived that day, Ya Rabbi please make tomorrow to be a good day, better day, stronger day. And you live one day at a time, you live within that day. And shaitan comes to take away your hope and say, no you're not gonna get anywhere, Allah going to beat you and now come back and take this pipe. And you say, no Allah forgave me and I'm going to make tomorrow a better day. So alhamdulillah every one day at a time, one day at a time and that Allah has a time for everyone. So you know there's a time in which to, to leave Jahannam and to move towards he heaven. So just pray that Allah give me that day Ya Rabbi to, to leave this hell and enter into your heavens and your paradises, grant me a good day, a clean day closer to my paradise and farther from this Jahannam. And every day is one day at a time inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ila shirif al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa ashabi kiram. Wa lama shaykhina fi tariqat nashbandiyyat al aliyya khasatan ruhiman tariqa gawta khadika shan nashba Muhammad Musa al Bukhari, Sultan awliya shaykh Abdul Faiz Daghestani. So Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani, Manali Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Abdi Khaliq al Khushdawani, Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Umma, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al Hussain alayhi salam, Sayyidatina Fatima Tiz alayhi salam, Wa Sayyiru Sadatina, Siddiqina al Fatiha.